My name is Michael Anthony. Until his death, I was executive secretary to one of the world's richest men, John Beresford Tipton. He had what was perhaps the strangest hobby in the world, and one of the few fortunes large enough to indulge it. This is Silverstone, Mr. Tipton's fabulous 60,000 acre estate. Here, after his retirement from the world of business and high finance, he pursued this hobby, which was nothing less than every now and then giving away to a total stranger the sum of one million dollars. And because he insisted on remaining anonymous, I was the man who actually delivered the check. You sent for me, sir? Mark, have you ever read this book? How to be happy though married. No, sir. Mr. Tipton, don't you think that's a rather flippant title? Most marriages are happy, I believe. Ah, then you think marriages are made in heaven? You could put it that way, sir. Hmm. Well, they may be made in heaven, Mike, but many of them seem to be fought out on this worldly plane. <laughs> but then only valuable things are worth fighting for. Our next millionaire, Mike. Harry Emerson Brown had been married for nine years. He had a pretty wife, an eight-year-old son, a three-year-old first and second mortgage, also a half-paid-for car, and a house full of furniture bought on time. I was leaving, the boss called me in and asked me what I thought of the new office equipment. You sit down and eat your dinner. He seemed very anxious to get my opinion. You know, it's a good sign when the boss starts to take a little interest in you. It's uh, those little things you can add up to a raise, and we certainly could use one. You better eat your soup while it's still hot. Oh, honey, you don't seem very interested. Oh, of course I am, dear. Don't be silly. Silly? My teacher was awful silly today. Asking me questions I couldn't answer. Well, Bobby, you know something? It takes quite a few years before you ever learn all the answers. If you ever do. Oh, it doesn't need salt, Harry. Taste it first. Oh, this darn thing doesn't work. Well, it always sticks when the weather's damp. It wasn't damp yesterday, and it didn't work then either. I'll put some rice in it. Honey, I don't want any rice. I want the salt. That's just an old superstition, Bobby. But that's what you told me yourself. I did? Uh. Uh. It's too salty. Well, you don't have to eat it, Harry. No, oh, well, go on ahead and tell me, honey. I did it myself. Yeah, this is probably all dried out now, but I had to keep it warm for you. Meatloaf again? Again? We haven't had it in weeks. I had it for lunch today. Well, how am I expected to keep up with your luncheon menu unless you want to call me at noon? Eat some macaroni anyway. I'm not hungry. You're tired. Eat your dinner, you'll feel better. Remember, feed a cold and starve a fever. Marge, I don't have a cold and I'm not tired. 
Bobby, if you finished with your homework, it's time for bed. Huh? Come on. Night, Pop. Better pull some salt over his shoulder. I think you're right, Bobby. Good night. <laughs> I need them. All right. I'll hang them right here on the bedpost where you can reach. Good night, honey. Now, Harry, what was that all about? What was what all about? I know what I mean. If I knew what you meant, I wouldn't have asked you. Look at me, Harry. We ought to have a talk. We talked. Yes, but we ought to be able to talk things over calmly. All right. We'll talk calmly. What's the answer, Marge? We never quarrel about anything big. Always about little things, like last night. All I said last night was, I'm sick and tired of finding your bobby pins in my ashtrays and pow. But you didn't have to act as though I committed a crime. I thought you said we were going to talk about this calmly. But I'm being perfectly calm. You're the one who always raises your voice about things. I raise my voice. Yes, I you never do. raise my voice. Oh, I now, talk Harry. about things calmly. Calmly, you're calm. <laughs> Bobby go to school yet? Mm-hmm. The cold sounds worse this morning. <clears throat> You're late, Harry. You better get going. Yeah. Oh, let's face it, Marge. It just doesn't work. What happened to us? Well, we had something when we first got married. Is it gone? Well, well, something happened. Oh, no money's to blame. Just something happened somehow. All I know, it isn't making any of us any happier. Isn't good for Bobby, hearing his parents quarrel all the time. Well, that's what I need. What do you have to do about it? Well, we gotta do something. You mean divorce? Divorce? What are you talking about, Marge? You know we can't afford a divorce with all the payments we're carrying. Not right now, anyway. Well, then what do you suggest? Marge, we've got to do something. I mean, we'll end up hating each other. Now, we're two adult people. We ought to be able to figure out something. I mean, you figure two people who are met. Wait a minute. Separate quarters. That's it? Sure. The den. The den has a bath next to it. I could move in there. I can have a cot brought in. No, the couch. You're used to sleeping on it anyway. Marge. Sorry. Yes, it's a good idea. You could use the side door and put an outside lock on it. Yeah, sure. That way we could both come and go as we please. Yes, it would be much better for Bobby, too. That's right. Sure, I'd be right here in the house if he needs me. You know, Marge, a lot of people get emotional in a situation like this, and I can understand it. But you and I have just proved we're adults, that we can find a simple solution to our problem. Uh, care for a cup of coffee? You see how simple it is, Marge, when you look at these things objectively? There you are. Oh, and uh, one more thing, Marge. I don't expect you to sit around moping, and I know you don't expect it of me. We have our own lives to lead now, and we don't want to step on each other's toes doing it. No, no, of course not. You want to go out to a movie with somebody? You go. Come and go as you please. No questions asked. Okay? Okay. The same goes for you. Mm-hmm. Two sensible adults leading our own separate lives, working things out in our own way. Didn't know you were here. Well, that's all right, Marge. <laughs> oh, 
I, I'm pleased to coming in this way. I guess I'll have to get out of the habit. Oh, that's perfectly all right, Marge. <laughs> uh, yeah, Cole sounds better. Oh, it's fine, fine. How's Bobby? Oh, he's fine. Oh, is he? Say, maybe I better go in and say goodnight to him. Oh, no, no, he's asleep. Already? Oh, yeah, it is 8.30. I, uh, left some coffee and things over there for your breakfast. Oh, thank you very much, Marge. Um, I guess you've got the key to the side door. Uh, yes. I, I guess, uh, you want my key to the front door. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Well, uh, I won't come in this way again. Remember. Well, that, that is the problem, isn't it, Marge? Of course, we could, uh, lock the door. That reminds us. No. Then we could unlock it. That's no good. I know what we could do. We can block it up with this. Make it impossible to open the door. Sure. Just bring it right over here. See, Marge, there's a sensible solution to every problem. There you are. I'm going to close the door. Right over here. Right up next to the door. There we are. Uh, it doesn't look so good up here, does it? Well, we can hang something up there. A mirror. A, a picture. Yeah. There we are. Now it doesn't even look like a door. <laughs> what do you think, Marge? 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 Do you hear me, Marge? I just hate to see my friends split up. But I guess it's just one of those things. Well, it's better this way, George. Marge and I are adults. We're sensible people. We're still friends, free to live our own lives. Well, how about living a little with Betty and me tonight? We're going to a movie. Well, gee, thank you, George, but I hate to horn in on it too soon. Oh, you wouldn't be. Betty's always liked you. You don't want to mope around here. Oh, wait a minute, buddy. I wasn't moping around here. Why, if you hadn't dropped by, I was going to go out and go bowling tonight. I'd go bowling some other night. Come on along with us. Well, OK. Hey, there's a good picture down at the beach. Oh, really? That sounds like fun. Hey, how about a golf game, son? It suits me. I can still beat you. Oh, 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 oh. It's not how we get with it. Betty's cousin Linda's here, visiting from the east. You can help us show our nice sound. OK. And she's pretty good. Oh, oh, really? That sounds like a pretty good idea. Who's that? Well, uh, uh, how do I know? I'm probably a friend of Marge's. I mean, she has a right to go out if she wants to. Hi, Joe. Come on in. I'll be ready in just a second. Oh, thank you, Joe. I had a wonderful time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So next week, perhaps we have to uh, start working on the play. That should be fun. We can start working with the costumes and, and uh, all the scenery. Say thank you, Miss Smith, Bobby. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I play outfield this week. Would you like to come over someday and try out the bat with me? stay home and work? Well, uh, uh, the boss just this minute called. See, I didn't know he wanted the work done by tonight. What'll I tell the girls? Oh, gee, I... I don't know, George. I, I just can't make it. You understand. Well, you can't make it? You can't. 
Okay. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, buddy. So long. next door. Uh, I know they told me I'd find you here. You are Mr. Harry Emerson Brown, aren't you? Yes. My name is Michael Anthony. I have something for you, Mr. Brown, a gift from an anonymous benefactor. It's a cashier's check for one million dollars. Oh, sure. One million dollars. It's tax-free. Mm -hmm. There is one condition. You must tell no one the exact amount or the circumstances under which you received the money. If you do, the unspent portion will be forfeited. Naturally. There's an exception. You may tell your wife, but no one else. Oh, don't tell me Marge had anything to do with this little stunt. This is not her style of humor. No, don't. I assure you, this is no stunt. That check is a bona fide gift from an anonymous benefactor. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is sign this agreement stating that you fully understand the conditions and the money will be yours. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. There we are. Well. What are you jokers playing up front? It can't be a scavenger hunt because you're not asking for anything. I don't think you understand. Now, look, you paid your forfeit. Why don't you go on out? No, go right out the way you came in. If you don't mind. No, just listen to me. Look, go on. Please, the look at the check. Would you it's go a back? cashier's check. Hey? <laughs> it is a cashier's check. It is a million dollars. Precisely. And now, good night, Mr. Brown, and uh, good luck. Yes, sir. Good night. something was bothering you. Maybe you'd like somebody to talk to. Hmm. There isn't much to talk about, George. This, uh, this isn't working out too well, is it? You're still crazy about Marge, aren't you? Oh, brother, I made the biggest mistake of my life. I really loused this one up. All right, so unlouse it. Tell Marge you're sorry. And she probably feels the same way. I wish she did. You haven't seen Marge lately. She's happy as a lark, having the time of her life. She never looked better, blooming like a rose. Well, that's too bad. Uh, you know, I've been lying here thinking, George, about Marge and me. I was wrong. It was right. The marriage. Right for me, I mean. I don't know what happened. You know, I can't even remember what we used to find to fight about. Well, one thing, you're lucky you can't afford to get a divorce right now. This way, you have to stay together a while. Maybe you'll have a chance to get her back. Yeah. Yeah, I, I see what you mean. I mean, if, if I had a lot of money, Marge could go see a lawyer tomorrow. Yeah. Hello? Charlie? Harry. Say, will you tell the boss I won't be in until this afternoon? Well, it's a personal matter on important personal business. Yeah, okay, well, thanks, Charlie. Goodbye. Oh, I, I didn't know you were still here. Well, uh, I'm not going to the office until later this afternoon. Matter of fact, I might not go to the office at all today. I didn't even try. Oh, that's all right, Marge. Have a nice time last night, Marge? Fine, fine. You? Oh, fine, great. 
I'll just leave these right here with you. Thank you, Marge. Oh, Betty Lou said that you came over last night. Did you want to talk to me? Well, I just wanted to borrow some coffee. Mm, I'll get you some. No, that's all right, Marge. I'll pick some up on the way downtown. All right. Go through with it, Marge. You can have the divorce if you want. If I want it? You said we uh, couldn't afford it, Harry. Well, that's all been changed now, Marge. I came into some money. A lot of money. Marge, I get the grandfather of all jackpots. Believe me, you'll never know how much. I wasn't going to tell you about it. Not at first, at least, but... Well, that wouldn't be fair to you. I had my chance and I muffed it. The least I can do is give you a second chance to be happy. Thank you, Harry. That's very thoughtful of you. I don't understand about the money, but I think it's wonderful for you. <laughs> and I said I was a reasonable adult, figuring everything out calmly and sensibly. No emotion. I'm about as adult as Bobby and not even half as bright. I don't blame you for wanting a divorce, Marge. I should have realized I loved you before it was too late. What did you say? You can start divorce proceedings whenever you want to, Marge. No, no. What did you say about realizing too late? What did I say? About realizing too late that I love you? Don't you mind saying that again? That I love you? Again. I love you. That's all I ever wanted to know. Bobby. The only thing you won't have is a couch in the living room. Right. 